This is Sonia Schreier Norris, Project Coordinator for Cloud at the Library of Michigan. Thank you for joining me for a short, cloud specific tutorial on cleaning up your original Plinkit template. This promises to be a fun filled video as I only have one chance to get it right due to some unusual circumstances with this template and recording session. So join me for an unscripted adventure. First, let's take a look at a Michigan Plinkit site that hasn't been updated in quite some time. I won't shame the people who created this site by naming them, so we're just going to call them a Plinkit Test Library. So, for those of you who've been around the program since 2009, you may remember that long ago, far, far away, we had a very different looking set of websites for small and rural libraries here in Michigan. Things really improved when we moved to Plowed in 2015, but a lot of the old content was carried over with the templates, and it's time to get that cleaned up. Some of the areas that I'm going to be talking about are covered in other videos, and I'm not going to repeat myself, I'll just point you to those other videos. But plenty of content is very specific to these old Plinkit sites, and I would like to point out where you want to make sure to go in and root out that old information. So first, let's take a look at the location and hours portlet. I already updated this one, and it's on the uh, mishlibrary.org site, and there's an entire video about how to update the location and hours portlet. So that's an important thing to know how to do. Also, there is a video under basic functionality at mishlibrary.org about updating your information for mel.org, the links, the logo, and the e-resources. So be sure to look at that one too. Also, under Plowed Hacks, there is a video about how to update your date for news items to keep them looking fresh. So that's another place to check out as well. So on to content specific to uh, the Plinkit sites. So at the bottom of the home page for the Plinkit sites, we have here a list of links under Goodreads. Almost all of these have now gone bad. And it's best to simply remove that content or go through and update it with content that you select yourself that is more relevant and that isn't going to um, be a bad link for your patrons. So for right now, I have spoken with the uh, director and content authors at this library, and we've decided what to delete. And we're going to delete all of the old material and they will at a later time decide what to go in and recreate for their patrons. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that link to those good reads, and I'm going to save that page. Now, we have a number of folders running across the top of the screen, as well as down the left of the screen, that maintain some pretty old information. Let's look under About Us. The home page has been updated with information that is specific to their library. However, subpages are not necessarily updated. The library card information is, that's great, it talks about who can get a library card, but the library policies page, which came with the Plinkit template, actually links you out to the Multnomah County Library. These are all links for um, policies in Oregon, so we definitely don't want to have this on our site. And the library services page is in this fake Latin. It was just built to give you some structure to create your own information about circulation, youth and teen services, reference, etc. So let's go ahead and get rid of library policies and library services. We can do that by going to About Us and clicking on Contents. When we scroll down, we see the different pages that are in this folder. So we have Library Services and Library Policies and I'm going to delete both of those. Let's take a look now at Kids and Teens. This used to be a really great section of Plinkit. For many, many years, we updated all of the links in these various sections, and we had a wealth of information 
for browsing that patrons could rely on. Unfortunately, it now looks very, very dated. The clip art is old. It's in a table, which is horrible for accessibility, and most of the links are broken. This is pretty much unsalvageable. If you would care to create a browsing selection of high quality resources, I suggest that you work from scratch or rely on other libraries, websites, but not on this. I'm going to go into Kids and Teens. And I'm going to delete Kids Corner, Middle Schoolers, High Schoolers, and delete. Also, I want you to take a look at parents and teachers with me because that is also something that is no longer relevant, but I want you to see what it is before I delete it. So we've deleted these three folders. And if we go under parents and teachers, we get this link to the Michigan Online Resources for Educators, which was a part of the Michigan eLibrary several years ago. It has since been discontinued by the Michigan Department of Education. This is a dead link and should be removed. So I'm going to go back to Kids and Teens and Content and remove the Parents and Teachers folder. Delete. If we look here under homework and research sites, many of these websites are dead as well. I'm going to go ahead and delete them. Once again, if you feel strongly about having a browsable collection, you can take the time to weed this through and then maintain it and redirect bad links, or you can go to other library websites that have more up-to-date information and um, start fresh with uh, a different set of links. So I'm going to go and delete homework and research sites. However, that leaves us with one page for Kids and Teens Home. We still do have the Michigan eLibrary eResources. We have great lists for both kids and teens. And after this video is finished, I will come back to this page and insert those references. You can find a video about that under Basic Functionality about the Michigan eLibrary. Next, let's look at the eShelf and Research. This is the same situation. It's just the older Mel eResources, and I will update those as well. If we look here under Goodreads, we're going to find that most of these links have broken. So once again, this needs to be removed. I'm going to go to eShelf and Research, which is the parent folder. Click on Contents. Go to Goodreads and Delete. Next, we have News and Events. They have a library calendar and a library news folder. Both of those are just fine. They currently just have one item in their news folder, but hopefully they'll be building out their site and adding more uh, items to it. And they have a library calendar, and they plan to be using their library calendar as well. This site, as one of the original Plinkett sites, has a return on investment calculator. This was a labor of love and a really great service for a long time. However, if you scroll down, you'll find that it hasn't been updated since August of 2014. Also, many of the items here are based on the Michigan eLibrary services. And now that we have new vendors, the information has changed completely. This is no longer an accurate resource. The director at this library has asked me to remove it, and so that's what I'm going to do. To reach the return on investment calculator, I need to go to my personal tools menu and dig down to the root folder contents. Find the return on investment calculator and delete it. Next, we have the Espanol section. When this was originally created, it was a resource for our Spanish speaking population. However, most of the links here now too, after three, four, five, six, seven years, 
are broken. So unless you have someone on staff who can read passable Spanish and update this section for you, this section also needs to be deleted. And I'm going to go into my root folder contents and find my larger Espanol folder and delete it. Now, this library has a friends group folder. This is uh, current information that they have kept up, so there's no need to delete anything here. And as you may remember from the good old days, there used to be a staff area. The staff area never really got a lot of use, um, but it did have its own calendar in case you wanted to maintain a staffing calendar with um, desk hours or schedules or anything else. It was also a place where you could do some reference work for um, working on styles. Uh, those are the, that's the cascading style sheets that allow you to make uh, pages look differently within your Plinkit website. But this information is generally not used any longer. And unless you are actively using your staff area, well, you can delete it too. So this library director asked me to delete their staff area. So I'm going to come down here and delete the staff area. Ah, much cleaner. Now we have a situation where we have a navigation structure across the top of the page and an identical navigation structure down the left side of the page. This is really just taking up more real estate than we need. So I'm going to go down to my Manage Portlets button. I'm going to open up Navigation. And I'm going to change my Start Level here to 1. There's also a video about Navigation and Portlets in Advanced Functionality. Now the top item over on the left-hand side of the home page is News. And all of the pages and features that you need to get to can be reached in your global navigation structure. There's a couple of other things I'd like to show you. For instance, once you get deeper into your template, you see that you have this original stock art. If you would like something that is more related to books or libraries or your geographic region, there's a very helpful article in the knowledge base about how to create those graphics. Simply go to your personal tools menu and click on get help and then put in the name of your theme. This is uh, for both the Hemingway and Slate themes. So I'm going to type in the name Hemingway and it comes up with an article about header background images in the Slate and Hemingway themes. This will walk me through exactly what I need to do with free software so that I can get an image that looks great that's library specific and not quite so business oriented. So now this library has a chance to take a template that has newer information and build on it. There's one thing that I'd like to do for them before I walk away, and that is to add a Contact Us form to the Global Navigation Bar. Contact Us has been added to all of the new templates, and all of the Plowed sites have them uh, that would like them but the old Plinkit sites didn't get them by default. So I'm going to go to my root folder contents. I'm going to add a new form. Title, contact us. We want to hear from you. And it is that simple. This has now created the form and asks for their email address, a subject, and their comments. I'm going to publish it. And then there's one more step. We need to tell the form where to deliver the resulting email. We do that by going into Mailer, clicking on Edit, and entering the recipient's name and email address. and save. Now they have a contact us form in their global navigation bar that will allow their patrons to reach them easily.
Woo! And that concludes this video on cleaning up your original Plinkit template for Plowed. I hope you've discovered some takeaways that you can apply to your own site. This project was made possible in part by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Have a great day.